In 2014, one of the most infamous releases in gaming history happened. With not much happening with the next-gen consoles and little reason to care about upgrading, Ubisoft launched at the time one of the most awful releases in gaming history with Assassin's Creed Unity. This game was meant to be and even now gets looked back on as the pinnacle of old-school Assassin's Creed from a gameplay perspective. This led to what many consider the downfall of this franchise, but what we all collectively knew at the time, especially after the release of this game and and then a year later Syndicate, was that this series needed change and that is definitely what we got. Origins was released in 2017, taking us to a time and setting that many in the fanbase were crying after. At the time it was met with plenty of love within the community for it going to where the community wanted it to go and see the franchise heading to. And the other fact that it was giving us an origin story of the Creed and following a character with an understandable story. However, six years after release you'll see many people in plenty of comment sections across YouTube and even some videos out there stating things like how they don't understand why this game is considered good or this game is nothing but boring traversal and the main point of criticism that I hear when it comes to this game is that it's the first game that started the pivot towards full-blown RPG Assassin's Creed and later brought us the likes of Odyssey and Valhalla. So let me stand in defense of Assassin's Creed Origins. The reason this video exists is because I personally really enjoyed this game when I played it back in 2017. And I've played this game two other times since release, with the most recent time having been two years ago. However, it does mean that you have quite a decent chunk of people that I've noticed recently having the opinion on this game that I was really surprised to see. Now, am I surprised to hear the words that traversal is boring? No, not really, as to be honest, I can understand where they're coming from, and I'm going to explain later on why I kind of don't necessarily find this too much of an issue. However, However, a quick reasoning that I do have for why I think the traversal issue can kind of be written off when it comes to this game is for two fundamental reasons. One is that outside of Assassin's Creed Unity, and you could argue Black Flag, and that's if you don't think as well that literally going around in a pirate ship for hours on end and just being irritated by random little boats attacking you every now and again, or extremely overpowered boats attacking you every now and again, it, unless you consider that fun, overall I think that every single Assassin's Creed game outside of Black Flag, possibly in Unity, has had boring traversal. Yes, most of the games all make you run through effectively nothingness. They'll make you run from A to B without much reason to kind of go away from the path, so I don't really see this as an issue, and I also think a lot of people don't take into account that this game was meant to be as close as possible for the time a one-for-one -one scale of Egypt. Talking about it being a one-for-one -one scale of Egypt, was it a perfect representation? No, but it definitely was better than most forms of media going around right now. The comments that I see levied against this game that I either think are entirely wrong or just odd takes to have are the likes of this game is bad because I don't like the new RPG games and my monkey brain is going to blame the first one that came out. Or on the other hand, they just have outright bad across the board takes where it's just like the game overall is just terrible. When in reality, like if you think a game across the board is awful, then you don't have a full opinion on it. Now people though are obviously entitled to their own opinion. However, I do think that anyone who is able to not give a rational argument as to why the game is bad or simply just can't even acknowledge anything good about a game shouldn't be taken with full seriousness. For example, I will be releasing a video later on this year talking about Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is giving it a fair shake, hopefully anyway. Obviously though, anyone who's watched my channel knows that I have a very vocal hatred for this game in a way. However, I acknowledge that the gameplay loop, especially for the first 30 hours, is actually fun. The world looks stunning and overall, it is probably the most refined Assassin's Creed game ever released. With those opinions though, I'm able to come to some form of rational argument that doesn't come across as fully biased against the entire game as a whole, because I do fundamentally think for a lot of people, it is a fun game and a fun Viking experience. For me to give constructive criticism towards that game though, for example, it would probably be summed up within this sentence. Just give us a reason for stealth and make the game half the size. Done. The game would probably have been better reviewed and also if you just removed the Assassin's Creed part from the title, then you wouldn't have to bother with the stealth. However, we're not going there. Now though, in this video, I am obviously talking about Origins. I'm not talking about Valhalla just yet, so if you are interested in that, 
make sure to subscribe to the channel. However, the main focus of this is that I want to focus on the main criticisms that I hear. The first of which is this trend towards the RPG titles. The second is going to be how Bayek is just an overrated and bland character. The third is going to be talking about the story and how it's apparently a standard Assassin's Creed plot with zero depth. And the final is going to be the open world and how people consider it dull and how in many people's opinions, there's just no reason for a lot of things being there. So let's talk about one of the most controversial games within the Assassin's Creed fandom. Just before we do continue though, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on this video if you love long form content like this and seeing me discuss individual games to general topics within the gaming landscape, such as the issues around open world models, the current issues plaguing the space of gaming, and like this video talking about a overall topic about a specific game and kind of giving you my takes on a game. However, if you do want to support any further, I do have a Patreon, it's £2 a month, that'll give you access to videos like this a week in advance, so thank you to everyone who's from Patreon and wanting to check this video out early, thank you very much. Uh, but also, it allows you access to vote on future content and behind the scenes on how I create videos like this. And also, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them as well. And lastly, just before we jump back into the video, I do have a new wallet card holder that you can go check out on minimaldesigns.com. It's my website, my company. So if you want to check it out, make sure to go do so. It'll be down in the description if you're in need of a slimline wallet. But now let's jump back into the video. Everything for Assassin's Creed, for the most part was looking up until 2014, which is where the foundations started to be very shaky. At this point, the series that Ubisoft didn't realise would be as successful as it was, was now on a five year run of generally decent content outside of the release of AC3 on release. And for anyone who complains about that, just look up what people thought of this game on release. Don't judge me, I'm just telling you the overall sentiment at the time. However, they knew change needed to happen, or at least proper refinement which is why they began development on a game in particular that would change the trajectory of this franchise in 2011 which wasn't long after the release of Brotherhood. What they knew about this game though was that they had the requirement of the next gen consoles that they could be working towards, which meant a more ambitious release was on the horizon. I remember how hyped people were on the lead up to this game's release, how excited everyone got when the trailer was released, and finding out how we were getting two games on the same day. The 12 year old version of myself at the time was so unaware of, you know, the reasons why we were getting two games. However, it was a great joy to be looking forward to, to be able to play two Assassin's Creed games in one year. However, on launch date, we ended up getting Assassin's Creed Unity and Rogue, with one of them being painfully rough. It was the most notorious release at the time, with so many bugs that were so extravagant and abundant for many. I personally didn't experience any issues on my first playthrough, and I've played this game through probably about five times now, and I've had only very small issues that haven't been like game breaking or completely making me lose immersion. This meant that Ubisoft had a great looking game, amazing parkour, great characters, but sadly it fell flat in two departments. One was the polish of this game on launch, and the other was that the second half of this game's story completely falls off a cliff. However, Unity is now looked back on as quite possibly one of the best Assassin's Creed entries in the whole franchise, and is unanimously agreed to have the best parkour possibly in any game ever, but definitely within every single Assassin's Creed entry. A year later, we ended up getting Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I was hyped for this game as, you know, it's set in England and the 13 year old version of myself was like really hyped to play something, there would be a recreation of where I live. However, when I ended up getting my hands on it, I wasn't able to really enjoy it. I just found something about the game just wasn't enjoyable. I know that many people did enjoy this game, however, I found it incredibly boring, especially its parkour that mimicked Unity's, but had two massive issues. The first was that the parkour was slightly dumbed down from the previous, and the other was that it was set in London, which is a city that, especially at the time of when it was set, is just massive roads, so it kind of gives you zero reason to even parkour in the first place. The overall sentiment of this game at the time was rather low. Most within the fan base either thought this game was okay or boring, with most agreeing that even though Unity was an abomination on launch, it still did better than this game in most departments, which left the gaming world looking at Assassin's Creed as nothing more than a failed franchise that got too big for its boots and the fans got completely defeated. Ubisoft within 2016 announced that they wouldn't be releasing a game that year, which 
which was the first time ever since they ended up choosing to go with a yearly release cycle that they decided to take a year off, as they wanted to make the next generation of Assassin's Creed games and actually do it right this time. Even though it was a very bleak time to be an Assassin's Creed fan in 2016, I think it was quite possibly one of the most fun when it comes to all-round speculation. The amount of videos that people were making questioning the future of this franchise, the time settings and the locations and stories that were going to be getting told. However, in 2015, Assassin's Creed Origins started development. This game's rumour and hype cycle was insane leading up to the first half of 2017. The two most requested settings for this game were either going to be Egypt or Japan across the board. Almost everyone wanted to see a game set in either or, and hearing that they might have been giving us an origin story of the existence of the Creed made the fans look at this game as quite possibly the return of the king. On the 11th of June 2017, Ubisoft showed what they had been working off at E3. Rest in peace E3, we miss you, kind of, a little bit. I don't know. We were going to Egypt. At this point, I don't think I've ever seen so much hype around an Assassin's Creed game in a very long time. They spoke about how this was going to change the future of the franchise, and how it was going to be taking into the step of what seemed like the new trajectory of all games, being an open world RPG, bringing in those RPG mechanics primarily, but keeping the essence of what kept it Assassin's Creed. At launch, it was met amazingly well, especially by the fan base, the critics, and just the average player. This game was a success story to 99.9% .9 of players out there. I remember playing this through when I was meant to be studying for my GCSEs and instead I ended up playing this game, you know, definitely a good choice of my time. At the time, it gave me a great load of comfort as I'm not someone who's the most academically talented person on the planet, so it gave me something to sink my time into and just kind of forget about everything going on. I wasn't the only one loving this game though. Most agreed that it was requiring change at the time, and we just wished that it had kept one part of the old school Assassin's Creed game if they were going to keep everything, which was Unity's parkour. So now we're entering into talking about the game itself and kind of the mechanics and the overall story, everything like that, so let me give you a quick rundown of how this video is going to look like moving forward. The next section is going to be broken down into five categories. You've got the story, the time setting, the gameplay, world design, and lastly is going to be the flawed argument, in my opinion, of it started the Assassin's Creed genre, therefore we hate it because we dislike Valhalla. That's going to be how this video is going to be structured from here on out. So let's jump straight into the story of Assassin's Creed Origins. The story of Assassin's Creed Origins is telling multiple at once, with the main story being the origin of the Hidden Ones which is later known as the Assassin's Creed, and what I mean by multiple is that on a surface level it is telling you the story of Bayek and his quest for revenge of the death of his son, which then leads you into the third story being told which is the history that is getting woven into Assassin's Creed and kind of how they like to put their twist on things with the Isu and then bringing in characters like Cleopatra and Julius Caesar. Now I would say that this game's story does a great job of giving us multiple different ideas within one thing. The game was sold on being an origin story of the Creed, which it definitely did. It goes through everything including the introduction of removing the ring finger, and then also going into the codes and ethics of the assassins and where they stem from. However, this game is coated with what is considered the typical Assassin's Creed story, and this is normally used as a way of kind of criticising this game. However, I have one thing, because a lot of people who criticise this are typically people who are Assassin's Creed fans who don't like this game purely because it's the RPG one. The main thing that I do agree with, and I don't always agree with this statement, however, I think this is fitting for this game, which is that Assassin's Creed fans don't know what they want, and they just kind of complain about every everything, even to the point of contradiction. And in my opinion, this is one of those scenarios. People go on, and this is like, if you went back to when this game was coming out, the amount of people who were like, we want characters like Ezio, Arno, and Edward, and they would complain non-stop about characters that weren't them, or weren't being like them, or people worried that they wouldn't have characteristics similar to them. And it's literally just the fact that they love these characters, the story's being told with them as well, so that is a big thing. However, the issue is, is that then people complain about this character having a similar trope to them, in the sense of that, you know, 
they end up having to avenge someone that has died, they end up joining into the creed or at least creating the creed in this instance, and then also on top of that they have levels of humour to them that make them interesting and not just like a brick wall talking. These are the characteristics of these three characters, but people decide to complain about this game and, and Bayek in particular instead of, you know, taking into account that all the characteristics of Bayek are attributed to the likes of Ezio, to the likes of Arno and Edward. So I don't really understand why the fifth time of them doing the same sort of family trope is the time when they now turn around and say it's boring or decide that, you know, oh, it's always been boring. It's like, yeah, I, if you want to stand by the statement that it's always been boring, fair enough. I think that at least gives you a level of, you know, cohesion to your entire argument. However, when all you're doing is complaining about this game and they're not bringing that same criticism to all those other characters, I don't think it's a fair criticism. One thing that I do think is really sad though as a choice that Ubisoft made was that this game is meant to be an origin story of the Creed, however with them releasing Odyssey that is set, you know, even further back in ancient Greece and then giving you the first assassin in a DLC, it ends up kind of completely ruining the fact that this is an origin story for the Creed. And that is a criticism that to be fair I can kind of stand by to an extent, however I do also have an argument against this on a surface level, which is the difference in stories that are being told between both games. Origins is more of a origin story, as expected, of the Creed and the Hidden Ones. However, Odyssey is a lot more of a story around the origins of the Templar Order, or as they are known in this game as the Cult of Cosmos, which personally I'm not a massive fan of the name. Overall, I would have preferred if they stuck to the Templar Order. However, I do understand why they didn't, because, you know, technically in history they didn't exist yet, so I guess, you know, you can kind of say fine. However, one thing that I don't think Origins is given enough credit for in comparison to almost any other Assassin's Creed game out there is the actual stories that are being told when leading up to the kill of almost any assassination of any character. They end up actually giving you levels where you're learning about these characters who you're about to assassinate truly more in depth. It's not like, for example, in Assassin's Creed 2, yes you have some characters, but overall it is just a case of go kill the henchman more than anything. Go kill these henchmen, they supply the weapons, they supply this. In Origins, you end up actually learning a lot more about a lot of these characters, you end up learning about their family lives, or if you're gonna learn anything at all, you're primarily learning about their actual reasons for joining the Order. It's not just because they want total control, it could also be because they're trying to save their family, or even, you know, just wanting total control, it could be that. Most of the time, it's always linked to some form of human thing, instead of them just being evil for the sake of it. Origins was the first game within the franchise to introduce this hierarchy of Templar assassinations, or at least, you know, the screen where it shows you everyone who you can, you can assassinate, which in my opinion, I actually do really like the look of this, it's one of the things I actually like. However, this game did so much more of a better job at this than Valhalla or Odyssey. I don't think anyone could even argue the case that this game was not better in that regard. With those two games, almost half of the targets that you're killing are some random guy who doesn't matter, they're just some leader of a camp, or they're just, you know, some random citizen doing things inside the city. They have literally nothing going from them. There is no story being told of them. There's nothing there. All it is is just some random character, some random AI in the game of just, yeah, please go here. Go just chase around inside of Greece or inside of England this random guy who literally nobody cares about and go kill them. Whereas in this game, they actually have fleshed out stories. You actually learn about them. They have unique locations. You actually get backstory. Like, they actually have a character. Instead of being what they are in Valhalla or Odyssey, where they are literally just nameless faces for the most part. However, talking about the targets that you end up killing, I think there is one guy who I need to talk about as I find him one of the most fascinating characters to be put into this game, but also that I love learning about when it comes to history, in my opinion anyway, is one of the best to learn about, which is Julius Caesar. I remember playing this game when I was younger and just finding the betrayal of Caesar and Cleopatra just surprisingly just brilliant and just kind of, you know, decent for compelling us to kind of what these characters would be like with the likes of Julius Caesar being a lot more kind of manipulative and his tactics to kind of take over. He wasn't just going to brute force his way through everything all the time. Like, yes, he was a guy who ran a military organization for quite a long time and got into power through his means of just being a very good commander. However, he was also a diplomat and he uses that in his ways to get what he wants. And honestly, the primary thing that backed Caesar was also the fact that he would do anything for Rome, especially in this game. You can definitely see it when it comes to him playing both sides. Effectively, like, 
Palpatine. Very similar to it anyway. His character is the epitome, in my opinion, of what you could imagine as the leader of a collective that wants nothing more than world dominance by complete compliance. I love the way that they did use both Caesar and Cleopatra within this game and actually gave them the essence of what these types of people might have been like and gave us way better representations of what we've ever had in other previous material. Like, yes, I understand some people will complain about how, for example, for example, the new documentary around Cleopatra where she's black and so on when you know there's all the history around it basically saying that she wasn't black in this game she is more darker skinned than she is lighter skinned for example i would say that this game she doesn't necessarily look like i could say honestly that when you're playing through this game you don't really pick up on it because to be honest she doesn't necessarily look like the rest of the cast of this game if i'm honest and you can take that how you want but overall most of the cast within this game are either black in some way which again isn't a bad thing i think that well, for example, Bike is a great example as to why, like, they were able to get away with just putting a character in and nobody was complaining. Nobody was talking about his skin color because guess what? He was a great character and people loved his character. And this game overall gave us Cleopatra in a way that most people were not whining and complaining because people liked her portrayal. People liked it. It wasn't something to be talked about. So overall, I can't really see a complaint as to her character, Caesar in general, or many of the characters within the story itself. With the last section of the story, though, that I do want to talk about is that primary thing that really this story is telling. This story is fundamentally the story of him avenging his son's death and vengeance taking over his life to such a degree that it ruins his marriage and even Aya within this game accepts that that happens, which is why by the end of the game they end up divorcing effectively, they end up splitting up. Sure, they say that they'll meet up multiple times and they do in some with an Assassin's Creed lore. However, they're no longer together truly. They've chosen that for the greater good, they need to kind of disconnect themselves from their marriage, from their relationship, and focus on the betterment of humanity as a whole. And I think this game's story is the epitome of trying to tell this. Because, for example, a lot of the other games, let's take a let's take the Ezio collection. In the Ezio collection, I love this collection overall, it's great. However, within Assassin's Creed 2, he doesn't really even care or know what the Assassin's Brotherhood are up until the end of the game. He's pretty much being like pushed in that direction slowly and slowly. And, you know, eventually you learn that almost every single person you've ever met is an assassin in some way. Then you go into Brotherhood where he is building up to become the leader of the organization. And you end up actually seeing the codes and ethics of the Creed truly come into play with this game. I think Origins does a really good job of blending that together where instead of obviously the Creed already being there, them kind of understanding that it's there or us as the audience knowing, it kind of builds up to that end moment of the creed is now formed. We're going to go off of these tenants, we're going to be doing these things that keep the world safe and allow people to have freedom. I think it does a good job of portraying what the Assassin's Creed story is meant to be when it comes to the conflict of what the Assassins stand for and what the Templars stand for. So as much as people want to say this game is boring and it's just a, oh, you're just watching this guy go hunt down people who avenged his, like, just to kill his, like, son and stuff. Honestly, I think you just need to replay it and take into account the humanization that they try to give and how effectively, no matter how much you try and, like, persist on this, it's not going to bring back his son. It's not going to do these things. But he also knows that by doing this he's going to help others and not allow this to happen to anyone else. So let's talk about the time setting and location of this game, which personally has to be one of my favourites within the entire franchise, mainly due to the time setting itself. As mentioned earlier in this video, Egypt was one of two main areas that people wanted to see this franchise go to, and as much stick as I give and others give Ubisoft, I don't think any of us could complain, especially at the time when it comes to going to somewhere that people wanted to see and creating a world that we love to explore, and bringing us to a time in history that people actually wanted. And truth be told, no other game franchise is able to do this in the same way as Ubisoft, or at least do it consistently. For all of the hate that they get, I also do believe fundamentally that, for example, Ghost of Tsushima, I can't wait to play it, it's going to be a game that I'm going to be playing very soon. That game is, from my eyes anyway, probably one of the only games out there that comes close to trying to recreate a time in history and make it captivating for a general audience to play through. That isn't just some, like, mystical world of superheroes all the time. Like, for me, for everything Ubisoft do wrong, I do also think they do one thing incredibly well, which is making worlds that people want to run around in 
and explore. Even if their exploration is trash, it's still the factor that they are ending up making a world that people actually love seeing at minimum and at least run around in for five hours. From being able to explore Alexandria at the height of its legends, about the great city to us and being able to climb the great pyramids and explore the tombs of the gods or at least you know the kings and so on at the time with all of the twists around the Isu being involved in some way I think it was a great way of combining Assassin's Creed with history. One part of history that this game does touch on is the fight between Cleopatra and Ptolemy, which they decently do well, however I would also say it's not the strongest factor of this game. I found that due to the events and stories that were taking place that we're following, it is a part of history, more or less, that is being sidelined due to the overall story being told, which isn't too bad, it still tells a little bit of history to us, but it isn't necessarily a big factor, it's kind of like, it is happening. It's like for example Game of Thrones, we're all captivated by this story of them fighting for the throne, but most of the time we're just captivated by, you know, the characters surrounding it going in. Which to be fair isn't too much of a surprise as most Assassin's Creed games in my opinion do this and twist history to fit the required narrative and do it pretty well. I made a whole video about this a while ago now which to be fair I found an interesting topic I might do something again in the future about it which talks about this idea of do Assassin's Creed games need to be historically accurate and my conclusion came down to they don't need to be a one for one liking of events that took place but at least rooted within the reality in some way. For example, I'm not a fan of the extreme push of mythological creatures that took place within the newer games, but I was fine with them changing the facts around the French Revolution, as these games weren't made to teach history through and through. They were made within historical moments to give us an interesting alternative reality to what would have happened in the world of Assassin's Creed. As if you google the French Revolution controversy around Assassin's Creed Unity, you're actually going to see articles talking about this. Personally, I don't have an issue with the fact that they chose to push a target like of it was the Templars who are manipulating things behind the scene to push this revolution like it's not that big of a deal it's not meant to be a documentary so stop whining about it I'll be honest that that's my opinion anyway I think once they start going into pure mythology then you're breaking the bounds of kind of what Assassin's Creed is which is bordering like realistic but you know Illuminati-esque groups trying to run the world however a big character that I think they did really well and I've already spoken about him is obviously Julius Caesar and how they told his story about how he was assassinated and his view on his life overall and definitely made him a good fit for the leader of the Templar Order. Which for me, I think his character within this game is probably one of the best representations of what he would be like within a work of fiction obviously, to what I would have expected him to be like back then in those times of his conquests over Europe and the Mediterranean. He acts with this calm manner in many moments within this game and as well as a tactical genius but clearly, but is clearly getting too big for his boots and having the power and want for control take over a bit too much and blur his vision. One thing that I wish they added a bit more of, however they didn't really do in its full entirety, is this idea of him wanting power, however that he also believed that he knew exactly what was right for the people of Rome and that's why he wanted the power and it wasn't just pure power lust the entire time. Like I said, he's probably one of the best interpretations of what a leader of the Templar Order would be like and he gives me similar vibes to Haytham in many ways. However, I definitely wouldn't say that he's better than Haytham, because I think that would be an outrageous statement to say, but I do definitely think that Haytham was the best characteristic of what you could imagine a actual leader of this sort of group being. One thing that I really do love though about this game is the end set piece around the Great Lighthouse and the whole Siege of Alexandria. I think that was really done and depicted really well, showing you different temperaments of the likes of Caesar as well. As well as that though, I think that what they did that was great was just showing you that it was all a massive power grab to take over Egypt, make it weaker all around so that it was easier to be controlled by Caesar. And then what you also get with things like the actual time setting and location of this game is what I think Assassin's Creed does immensely well and then the likes of Origins and Odyssey and I believe Valhalla as well is this whole idea of being able to recreate these available places and explore these worlds what they would have looked like back then with you know the educational modes allowing you to see kind of ways through history and kind of see different things and I know that there is actually classes out there that 
history classes that have used it, which I think is a really cool thing. Even though this isn't about Origins in particular, but I personally think when a lot of people ask me why do you even like Assassin's Creed or think that it's any good, the answer normally that comes to my head is that I love the recreations of history and the twists in the grander narrative. It's an exaggeration upon life and the history of many people. Including myself, I think that we all found that the real history being told was great to learn about and explore a time setting that even if you didn't exactly love it, you end up exploring it and finding yourself come to love it by the end. I found that with Origins as well, they did a really good job of this, giving you an idea into the history, the time setting, the fights going on, how all of these characters would have interacted with each other, and obviously just showing us Egypt in a very beautiful manner. And another example of this for me, and the biggest example that I have, is I remember when we were learning about the flying machine by Leonardo da Vinci in our art lesson in year 6, so I would have been I think about 11 or 10, I don't remember exactly. However, I remember learning about this in an art lesson, and because I had played Assassin's Creed 2, me and my friend were sat there just like finding it so cool learning about this in an art lesson and just being able to tell them like all of these different facts and they were like oh wow how did you actually know about that? And it's like oh we played this game they told us these different things so I'm assuming parts of it are true and so on and it was just cool to find you know real life connections to Assassin's Creed and just again that grander narrative twist that they put on every single game. One of the most controversial parts of this game, looking back on it now, has to be the change in the core mechanics of what is Assassin's Creed gameplay. With the primary four areas being radically changed from the previous entries, with those being combat, parkour, RPG mechanics, and stealth. Now, before we end up talking about each individual area, we need to talk about why these changes happened in the first place, which is put down primarily to the fact that it got entirely stale. People from across the fan base to just the average player wanted big change. They needed change. The game got stale, and it didn't end up doing anything for anyone anymore. However, one of the things with any form of change is that it's always going to stir up a fuss in some way. Change is not always good, but change is not always bad. Everyone has their opinions on this, but even Either way, I think they made the better choice, especially for this game. Sure, moving forward after it wasn't too good, however, I do think Origins is the epitome of being able to take in an Assassin's Creed story and tell it through a different means of gameplay style. So let's discuss each area one by one, starting with combat. This game was the first Assassin's Creed game to truly change the combat system. Within AC3, they dumbed down many of what was already a really easy combat system within the first load of games. And then eventually they ended up deciding to kind of refine this idea within the likes of Unity, but like I said, it wasn't necessarily a massive jump in change, it was kind of just refining what was already there. Within this game, they definitely chose a more Souls-like system, or at least they tried to make it look like it was. They tried to mimic many different areas from the combat style, though not many other games look the same as in this case. I found that this system wasn't necessarily a big issue in my opinion, I don't think the change in combat was that big of a deal, primarily because it meant that you were able to take on multiple different enemies at once, instead of just having to focus kind of on one enemy and just waiting for animations to play out. But also, one of the main reasons why I wasn't necessarily worried about this in comparison to let's say Valhalla, is that the stealth was at least somewhat useful within this game, and was necessary and essential within many different parts of the game, especially if you're playing this game on its hardest difficulty. Which in my opinion is the only way to truly play this game, and I'm not someone who like, is a massive fan of playing games on their hardest difficulty, I don't think it is for the average person, but this game literally is so absurdly easy on normal difficulty, and even on hard, and I don't recall if it was hard or if there's a harder difficulty than that, but yeah, literally this game just isn't that difficult overall. So you kind of have to play it on the hardest difficulty to get any form of little bits of challenge within it. Overall though, I have to say that at least the stealth was required. The reason why though I think this game is able to get away with changing the combat system is like I said, they had a reason for stealth being there, it wasn't awful and it actually served a purpose. The change in combat was dumbed down in comparison to let's say a Souls-like game or even The Witcher, but if you compared it to any of the Assassin's Creed games that came before such as Unity, it's not really much of a change that led up to that and then they just decided to go, you know what, we're gonna go with the times instead of kind of how we've got 
put it within Assassin's Creed right now. But one of the biggest changes that ended up happening, and I think many people weren't happy with, especially at the time, and I'd say primarily looking back now, is that the parkour was radically different. We've all come to accept that Unity has the best parkour within this entire franchise, and to go from Black Flag's one button press to now needing to actually think when parkouring, and if you want to make even more cooler strats, then you actually have to learn how to be good with this system. Which meant that you went from a massive jump to then a bigger downgrade later on, however it just meant that they kind of went back to what was already a thing. However, to change literally everything outside of the story is something that many will question, including myself, and I do think there is genuine reason to question a lot of this, as the parkour of Unity and Syndicate, even Syndicate to be fair, even though it was dumbed down compared to Unity, was better than all of the rest of them. And a video that I'm interested in doing, and I've like, I started to create it a while ago and then I stopped, is this idea of can games genre jump successfully, and I'd be interested to know if you would be interested in that. Anyways, I did find that a lot of the issue that people did have with this game is primarily because we had Unity, we effectively did get spoiled prior, and now people are like, this is the standard for every single Assassin's Creed game and it has to be in there, otherwise it equals bad. Which I do kind of find, like, kind of surprising, because obviously people do love games like Black Flag, they literally have probably the most dumbed down parkour system of any of the Assassin's Creed games. You know, I don't think this isn't a reason to not like this change, I'm not trying to, like, change your mind on this, I, I agree, I do think that Unity's parkour was amazing and it would have been great to see it in these new games, however, we didn't. I do find it interesting because I do want to know exactly why Ubisoft don't add it in to newer games, knowing that people want to, or at least people within the fan base do. It could be, you know, an issue of just skill, of like they don't, like the average player doesn't enjoy it, or it could be the fact that, that, you know, it's just really hard to code into their game. It could be that. Who knows? I do think though that this is another perfect example of modern games stripping things away from you, and it just makes you, you know, dislike them or want these things more. I do think it's a interesting thing. You have it within many different live service games that take advantage of this. You don't really see it too much within gameplay mechanics though. So this isn't a change that I can really say we shouldn't care about, as I found this annoying, however the only reason this was really done in the first place, in my opinion anyway, is that they wanted to go purely in the direction of getting more of the average fans of RPG games over let's say an Assassin's Creed title. So instead of creating a whole new franchise, they kind of kept giving us Assassin's Creed, but removing the elements that made the series what it was in the first place, which I think many of us can agree with, was fundamentally the parkour. That's what really sold Assassin's Creed at the original beginning times. If you were to summarise this franchise, it would probably just be time settings, tail assassinations, and parkour. Those three things put together make pretty much any Assassin's Creed game what they are, and actually are what are the three kind of core things that people love about any Assassin's Creed game. Sure, people will complain about tailing missions, but fundamentally, they made sense for why they were there. It gave you more access to, you know, the social stealth elements that, you know, people praise, that sort of stuff, so yeah. Before we talk about the elephant in the room for the changes that were made around stealth, I kind of want to talk about a topic within Assassin's Creed, and I think I'll definitely get some backlash for this, but it is the stealth, and why people ever thought these games were like some stealth greatness to ever be made. It kind of just makes no sense to me. Or at least the fans act as if this was like a stealthy game, which in my opinion, these games have never actually been good with stealth. Like they've had stealth elements, sure, you assassinate people and you have to be stealthy in doing so. They aren't really stealth games in my opinion. Like when I think of a stealth game, I'm thinking of Metal Gear or Dishonored or Thief. Like those games where Stealth is a root core mechanic, it just doesn't feel like it is in many Assassin's Creed games in my opinion. For example, I think social stealth is a cool idea, however even in the early days of this franchise, with the likes of Ezio, it wasn't exactly a requirement outside of being forced to use it at times. The best stealth this whole franchise has ever came into contact with was Unity, because it actually did everything the old games did, added on top of that, and then added one pinnacle thing that none of the other games had at the time which was the ability to crouch. Probably the epitome of when you ask someone, what would you imagine stealth is like within a video game? They would say, you crouch, you hide behind things. What do they not have, ever? Crouching, like proper crouching, a button to crouch. It took them five entries to add a crouch button. This actually allowed you to take on missions and hide behind things in a way that was immersive and actually felt like you were being stealthy. Yes, Origin strips back many of these elements. However, the biggest difference between something like this and Valhalla is like I said earlier, 
earlier, Valhalla's stealth is more of a feature that isn't needed to play this game. Whereas in this game, you actually need to be stealthy in many different parts of it. You actually need to be if you actually want to take on different areas and not just be completely obliterated right away. You need to do so to take on the little guards every now and again throughout the camp so that when you take on that big boss that, you know, the whole thing of when they got rid of being able to one hit assassinate people, that when you end up doing that, you're not just going to be bombarded by tons and tons of guys. The stealth within this game is actually required, which I think is the big fundamental difference between something like this and then Valhalla, because I know know people will ask why do you you know talk about Valhalla being bad when they both have the same sort of aspects I think that is the key difference which is Valhalla literally you don't need to be stealthy whereas this game you need to be stealthy another thing that you'll hear a lot of when it comes to this game is that it's just too big for a lot of stealth activity which in my opinion you can't really ask for a game to be vastly bigger than the previous games which at the time was pretty much like a requirement for games coming out for some reason and with that to be set in a time where cities were not as densely populated as the likes of Paris within the revolutionary times. So with that all being said, I think the stealth being dumbed down in terms of variability, yes, that is true, but it didn't lose its functionality at all. But let's now talk about what I think is the biggest fascination around this game, which is the role-playing mechanics that they decided to change out from one game to another and effectively become a Witcher clone. However, I think the first place to start with is asking why did they choose to go down the route of being an RPG? Like I said though earlier, the history of Assassin's Creed leading up to this was incredibly bleak. People across the board were bored of this franchise and completely done with it. You then also had in 2015 the release of The Witcher 3 and people absolutely loved it, so those two things put together definitely gave a main driving factor towards changing the game in this direction. However, in the making of this video, I ended up going through a few of the older interviews for this game, and I'll link it down below just so if anyone wants to watch the interview as well, which is with Ashraf Ismail, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, who was the creative director of Black Flag, he was then the creative director of Origins and later Assassin's Creed Valhalla. He no longer works for the company due to issues that I can't really talk about in this video purely for demonetization purposes. So if you are interested, just search his name up, you'll find it pretty quickly. In this interview, you had two very big important things confirmed. One thing was that the development of this game began after Black Flag, which basically goes against one of the biggest things that people use for this game, which is that they were just chasing The Witcher 3's success. And the other big thing as well was why the RPG mechanics were in the game in the first place and where they rooted from. So here's the clip now so that you get some further context. You know, funny enough, I, I think we have uh, I think we have a real talent within our studio and within our people to build really wonderful worlds. Uh, Egypt is breathtaking. And, and I'm, I'm not saying that just out of an artistic sense or a technological sense. Um, one of the things we did on Black Flag, there was a, a key word that we used at the beginning was exploration. We wanted a strong sense of exploration. But I feel like after the game launched, what I realized is we had a really good sense of exploration, but the discovery feeling could be way better. And so for Origins, that was a, one of the big words we used for the world is we needed a strong sense of discovery that you are rewarded for exploration deeply and that you're consistently surprised by what the world has to offer you. And so we tried to ingrain that deeply into the world that you're always rewarded, whether it's a gameplay reward, narrative, lore, whatever it is, something that surprises you, something unexpected, uh, something that felt like it belonged there and it was part of the world, but it means something to you as the player. And so uh, I think, again, people will probably have that sense of exploration and discovery that, you know, it's a very different game than Black Flag, but I think they'll feel that sense of philosophy, that design. Uh, you know, it is pretty much the same team that made Black Flag, so uh, I've heard that comment a lot that there's a sense of Black Flag in there somehow. Uh, I think it's due to the people and our philosophies. Uh, so the world is quite magical. Uh, I, I, I think it's one of the best open worlds we've ever built in terms of not just beauty, it's beautiful, but in terms of its density, scope, the things you can find in it, the, you know, the lore, the details are quite Awesome. What this ended up telling us is that they wanted to expand on what they had brought into the franchise within Black Flag. However, I believe the reason they took a year off was down to the moment that they mentioned within the interview, which was wanting to make sure this was the game they wanted to release in the state that it was. Which either means the game was not close to being done, or that they needed to reevaluate the issues when it came to the state 
of the entire franchise at this point, how stale it was, and what to do moving forward. So for me, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the elements that we saw were already a part of this game leading up to it, however I wouldn't be surprised if the likes of The Witcher 3's success, the failure of Unity and Syndicate, then on top of that just kind of had the general fan and average player viewed the franchise, which created a massive need for change within the franchise, so they decided to double down on what they had already done recently when it came to Origins and just go, you know what, let's just make The Witcher 3, but with Assassin's Creed on it as well. So we now know why they chose to make the leap of faith into Origins and why they decided to make many of the changes that they enacted, or at the very least we know why they wanted to make change, mainly due to what I mentioned earlier about the current state of the franchise. Now I do want to just say as well that this doesn't mean that obviously okay yeah this change was ultimately good, I do think that this was probably a change that was good in this game's instance, however I do think that it opened the floodgates sadly to what we got later which was Odyssey and the fact factor that, you know, they just started to go full-blown mythology and just basically going fully just into fantastical arenas. Instead of keeping it rooted into what was already existing lore and what we already knew to be the Assassin's Creed franchise, they decided to just go, you know what, why not add these elements? Who's gonna complain? But then it turns out that you alienate a lot of the fan base by doing so. So again, this doesn't mean that if you dislike this game because they decide to go RPG, you're necessarily wrong. However, I do think that if you're gonna make this complaint, you need to also acknowledge that at the time of this game's release, it wasn't in a healthy state. The franchise was not looked at favourably. The actual average fan didn't think that Unity was an amazing game. We look back on it now with very just great eyes. We're like, oh yeah, this game was absolutely fantastic. But in reality, you know, the game wasn't actually what we believe it to be now, especially at the time. It was broken, it was unfulfilled, and even to this day, I couldn't say that it is fundamentally, like, the best Assassin's Creed or even into a, like, amazing game. It is decent. It is a good game if you have five pounds when it's, you know, on discount, but it definitely wasn't worth the money that they were charging on release, and honestly, even now, with all of the fixes, I wouldn't say the game is even worth, like, 20 pounds. So it's a good thing that it is on sale most of the time. <laughs> all I'm saying, though, is just that take into account the factor of where the franchise was, instead of automatically looking at this as ultimately bad just because it's RPG and we got later on what we got, sure, there were some elements of it, for example, the looting system, which were horrendous, nobody's gonna deny that, absolutely disgusting. Uh, however, I do think that we just need to take into account a little bit more the actual reality of the situation. Instead of looking at it through this black and white perspective of, okay, old school Assassin's Creed, new RPG Assassin's Creed. No, ask the question, why did it happen? Why did it end up happening? You may have enjoyed Unity, you may have enjoyed Syndicate, but that doesn't mean that the average player and the average consumer of their product was. Let's spend some time and talk about the open world design. The first place I want to start is this idea of this game being too open or too big. So what do I honestly think of this issue? I do think it's a genuine critique from a gameplay perspective, however from an Assassin's Creed map perspective, it's kind of an awful take, and this is why. Is the game massive? Yeah, 100%. However, every single Assassin's Creed game has tried to be as accurate as they possibly could be to the setting and location with the technology they had available. And with the main complaint of the game being too big, I think that people I don't really know what people are after, if I'm honest, when it comes to this critique, mainly because unless you want tiny deserts, not much else, and basically trying to say, okay, well, you need to have no moments where you get lost or bored, then, you know, it's awful. Like, I agree, I don't like auto-sprinting horses. However, this game is meant to be a one-for-one -one liking, or as close as it possibly could be, to Egypt. There's going to be a lot of desert traversal. That's a given. I think, though, they could have probably added, you know, better things to do, like, on the side, and with more side quests and activities to do, just scouted around the desert locations, however, when it comes to being as accurate as possible to the times, the only time that I think this is a good take to have is if you're also willing to accept that Black Flag runs into the same issues. Because outside of you being attacked by either a boat that you are going to one shot or is going to one shot you, they don't really have interesting movement. You're just sailing the sea. The reason I'm using Black Flag as a reference is that the only comparable game in this franchise that sacrifices player attention for somewhat realistic approaches to traversal is the naval combat system within Black Flag. What we need to remember as well is at the time of games like Black Flag's release, these games were so off the rails when it came to random encounters between areas just for the sake of it. So instead of it being, you know, for like an actual gameplay perspective of like, okay, cool, we need something to, you know, make the player want to go over here. It was literally just added so that every like two seconds there was something. 
that you needed to go fight, that you needed to go collect. And this is the thing, Ubisoft maps, fundamentally, are cluttered messes. Look at Unity. Unity, like, I love Paris in this game. However, the entire map is a cluttered fest. Like, a clutter fest of just tons of just crap, basically. You then end up with the same issue within 2, with Brotherhood, with Revelations, with 3, with 4, with Unity, with Syndicate. Every single game is just clutter. This game, for the scale of it, basically minimised a lot of the clutter in comparison. In my opinion, they decided to uphold keeping the map more realistic than necessarily going for a gameplay perspective, which I think, depending on the type of player that you are and what you kind of prefer, I think there is going to be arguments for both. I can understand to an extent if you are willing to also say the same thing for other games out there, that's fine. However, uh, if, for example, you love the likes of any Assassin's Creed game, literally any of them, and you choose to complain specifically about Origins and that it's too big and supposedly cluttered with stuff, and supposedly boring to traverse, I think you also need to uphold that same criticism to the entire games, like every single game in the franchise. Is the map massive? Yes. Can an open world map be too big? Yes. However, you can't have a map be realistic to an area and also want them to portray an interesting traversal. Now yes, is there ways of mapping around this? 100%. I think games like Red Dead Redemption 2 are great examples of boring traversal. You're just riding a horse, fundamentally, but making it interesting. From the fact that you have to do different things with your horse to make it actually, you know, better to ride, all the way through to just the fact that you've got random encounters appearing that feel natural, and I think this is the fundamental thing that Ubisoft games have never been able to do, which is have random encounters feel natural and not just random scripted events for the sake of having more things going on. And I do think it would be better, for example, moving forward. They kind of tried to do it within Valhalla, but it didn't work in my opinion, uh, primarily because the side encounters in this game were considered side quests, really just stupid, but there you go. Overall, within Origins, for example, if they had more things like bandits trying to attack you on the road, I think that'd be cool because, for example, sure, I'm not necessarily 100% when it comes to the history at that time, but even if you look at pilgrims going from places like Rome to Jerusalem, when Rome changed to Catholicism, and they would end up going along this road needing to hire people like the Knights Templar to be able to get to these places because bandits would attack them on the roads within these deserts and so on. Not necessarily Egypt, obviously, but these sorts of areas around the Middle East. I think that it would have been interesting to see more of those sorts of things than what we did within this game. I can't really complain about it. Personally, I didn't mind it. I do think the action pieces look amazing. I think the overall sets that just look amazing. The desert, for all that people say it's boring, looks beautiful. Like, fundamentally, it's probably the best recreation of a desert, especially when you have all the mirages happening and everything like that. I think that's kind of cool. So what I want to talk about, though, when it comes to a game that does a better job of world design in this department from any of the games prior, in my opinion, and any of the newer titles, is my favourite map of Unity. And when I say open world design, or just world design in general, I don't mean the sense of, you know, the collectibles. Like I said, it's a cluttered mess. What I mean is that Paris feels realistic, especially for revolutionary Paris. It feels like you would expect it to be at that time in history. It's not overcrowded in every single street. There is areas that feel richer, there is areas that feel poorer, there is bits going on that actually immerse you in the revolution that is brewing under the surface and starting to become bigger and bigger as the game goes on. It utilises the costumes to also create a real sense of area within Paris where you've got people who are richer and poorer like I mentioned, whereas in like pretty much any of the other Assassin's Creed games, most people typically look the same most of the time, I'll be honest. But in my opinion, it's the perfect playground that this franchise needed to incorporate its parkour mechanics into the leveling system and uh, just allow Ubisoft to actually create a believable moment in history to explore. Now, the reason why I think Origins actually did a better job than what most people are willing to admit and they just class as a cluttered map is because, to be honest, as much as people want to say it is, it's a massive open world with a decent amount of collectibles still, still a lot of stuff to get, sure. However, it's nowhere near as cluttered. It is no, like, by just a space comparison of what you actually get as well, it's so much better, especially with things like the side content that you get within this game. You could argue the side content is mediocre. That's fine. You could argue that there's a lot of other things. 
but fundamentally, this game follows the linear story format of any Assassin's Creed game. It has a decent amount of collectibles. It also has side content. All of these things make a decent Assassin's Creed game. Now, Origins, in my opinion, does a better job when it comes to map design than many within the entire franchise, even though many like to call it boring, mainly due to the, you know, the map. When I just say that it's uncluttered, that's why people think it's boring. Most people are used to the Ubisoft approach of every 10 seconds, there is random artifact to pick up, or every 10 seconds, there is a feather to go get. It just doesn't matter. Why do you care so much about having collectibles everywhere? Many people, for some reason, view a lot of the previous games as like some of the best open worlds ever made, when in fact, they're just a linear story game with, you know, tons of collectibles, and at, like, the best parts of it, extremely mediocre side content. Whereas this game actually gives you decent side content, such as the tombs to explore, quests like Reunion, the champion, and accidental philosopher. But mainly, the best bits of side content are, in my opinion, comes within the Hidden Ones DLC, where you find out who's been hunting you down this entire time. It turns out to be the Scarab's son, trying to avenge his father's death, and he ends up learning from Bayek about how violence and just chasing vengeance isn't everything. The main lesson that he learns within the first game, he passes on to another. It's probably, in my opinion, the best side quest within any Assassin's Creed game, across the board. And I think it's very just sad that it's only within a DLC. However, at the same time, I guess, it's kind of what happens every now and again. Look at The Witcher, many people consider things like Blood and Wine and Hearthstone to be some of the best things to ever come from The Witcher 3 and their DLCs. But yeah, overall, when it comes to the open world design, and more particularly just the world design, so things like the side content, how the pacing is of the actual world structure, I think, yes, you can argue the map is boring as long as you're willing to also say that to almost every single Assassin's Creed game out there, almost, without like pretty much the only one that I can say would be against that is Unity when it comes to your immersion status. But you also have to think of it from the perspective of they try to create a world that is realistic. They're trying to create Egypt. They aren't trying to create gaming Egypt where all you're thinking about is slaughtering people every two seconds and just collecting random stuff every two seconds as well. Like, it doesn't make sense to be doing that all the time. There needs to be the traversal. You need to be going through the desert. You need to be seeing these massive set pieces with things like the pyramids. I don't think people are willing to actually realize that and they just go big map is boring it's because it's not filled with tons and tons of collectibles every five seconds i want to talk about though what i think is truly the weirdest take of the entire lot, which is the hatred some people have for this game, who are within the actual, you know, fan base of Assassin's Creed solely because it started the RPG trend, and in my opinion, it is a stupid argument for disliking a game. I mean, with all due respect, you could use any argument outside of this, and it would be more valid. And when I say that, I mean, like, you could literally critique the open world design if you wanted to. You could find reasons within that. You could find reasons within the plot structure, within how the characters are, how Alexander is designed and all these different things like you could use these areas of the game to make better more compelling arguments with more validity than just saying i dislike this game because it's an rpg assassin's creed game the two things this argument doesn't take into account is that most people when this game launched absolutely loved it and thought that it was a good change for the franchise and the other is that they're heavily romanticizing the original games yes i love the Ezio collection black flag and unity however that doesn't mean they're perfect. You can't just write off the reasons of this game's existence solely due to Valhalla isn't a good Assassin's Creed game, or that Odyssey, they just chose to care more about everything else outside of the title of Assassin's Creed. When this game is in fact an Assassin's Creed title, with a story that tells the origins of the Creed, and it also doesn't laugh at the face of the fans who love the lore around this franchise. But when it comes to the many reasons that you could list for why people just shouldn't have this opinion and how it's just a really weird stupid black and white way of having an opinion about a game i think the one that's just going to have the most merit and the easiest one to prove is literally that before this game came out the franchise was in the bin the entire thing nobody thought they had any hope going forward the average player looks at assassin's creed even to this day as a laughing stock because of unity a lot of fans ended up departing from even caring after unity's launch because guess what it was so bad that people have zero faith in ubisoft 
moving forward. The amount of romanticization that this old gen Assassin's Creed has around it, when in reality, when it came to that point of time, people did not enjoy it. You can't just completely write off the reason for change just because you didn't like the change later on down the line. If you enjoy Origins, great. If you enjoy Odyssey, great. If you enjoy Valhalla, great. I'm obviously going to disagree with you on some of it, but overall I do think that for you to think that none of these games should exist or at least their Origins is bad because Valhalla or because of Odyssey, you need to really rethink what makes an Assassin's Creed game? Why these games had to adapt and change in the first place? It's not all just because they wanted that quick, easy money from the RPG trend. Maybe it was because, you know, the franchise was looked down upon. The franchise was not doing well. Every release that they had released over the last two years did poorly, and they released three games in two years and it did not go well. It got to the point where literally nobody outside of the fan base really cared. And even then, the average fan pretty much stopped trying to defend Assassin's Creed or even Ubisoft and lost all hope going forward. I think that you can say that you don't like this game because it's too big to explore for you, or that the combat changed, or even that the parkour changed, but I don't think that you can use the argument that because it started the trend towards what we got with Valhalla, when in fact this game was the pinnacle of genre jumping successfully. It did everything right. This game did it perfectly. They set the expectations. They didn't go overboard. They actually did what they promised for a change. They released a working title, and not only that, one that allowed new players to join in on the fun and the old players to enjoy new change and a new change of pace to the franchise and not feel like they were being alienated entirely. And I think this is one of the fundamental differences between something like Odyssey and like Origins. Odyssey feels like to the average Assassin's Creed fan, a massive middle finger. It just feels like you're being told to go away and go play something else. Whereas Origins has its roots. It has the Assassin's Creed elements within the game. There is a reason for stealth. There is an actual story being told that is linear and makes sense. It's not like Odyssey, where they decide to just shove in everything under the sun because it's going to make the random person who doesn't really care what's going on and just wants a lengthy game that has zero soul to it. I think a lot of people write off this game within the fandom just because it was the RPG starter, when in reality, you could use better arguments, I'll be honest. Like, yes, this is an in defense of Assassin's Creed Origins video, but to be honest, there is better arguments to make why you don't like this game. <laughs> don't just use that one. Go back and replay it. Come back to me with why you dislike it. In 2017, most people were in love with this game, you only had a few people who were looking at this with sour grapes, purely because they didn't enjoy the other new titles, so they allowed it to cloud their judgement. As I've said in this video, Origins, in my opinion, is the best Assassin's Creed game to come within the new generation of Assassin's Creed games. And it's also better than many of the older games as well. It gets a lot of hate online, but I also think that it gets a lot of love from people like me and many within the video game video essay space. I can understand where a lot of fans are coming from when it comes to disliking this game because it was the first step towards a game that wasn't an Assassin's Creed story that we would typically expect. And getting a game that wanted to be The Witch 3 so badly that it got lost in the sales numbers and forgot why the fans loved these games in the first place and why people enjoyed The Witcher as well. For me, Origins is a great game, primarily around an Assassin's Creed game, because it follows the more standard Assassin's Creed storytelling tropes, but also allows you a proper insight into the minds that you are hunting down as well. You end up learning about many different characters within this game, and you actually understand that not all of these villains are one-dimensional, like many of the prior AC villains, and also not all the heroes are just good because they're good people. We see Bayek faces demons from his son dying to the marriage eroding away as the path for revenge paved in blood ultimately removed any resemblance of life that he had left. Origins came at a time when the franchise was completely in the bin. After two releases that were subpar due to either technical issues or underwhelming experiences, taking a year off for the first time in their entire history outside of, you know, the beginning time, the game that kept the grounded version of Assassin's Creed as long as you don't hate the whole mirage hallucinations and the end game events. We got a time in history that many of us love learning about. I think the most important thing about this game is that it is an Assassin's Creed game at heart. It doesn't try to be anything else at the same time. 
It isn't like Valhalla, where it wanted to be a Witcher 3 so badly that it kind of got lost in the source and just became something of an abomination in comparison. Odyssey as well is a game that, like I said, it's more of a game outside of Assassin's Creed. It should have just definitely been called Odyssey and just left it at that. However, it at least gave you the story of the starting blocks of what the Templar Order was and so on. However, I think for that game, the main downfall of it was that they just, you know, chose to give up on the idea of the female lead as they had zero faith that the fan base would like a female lead. Like, if you want me, like, I'm going to be making a video at some point about Odyssey and that will be a big thing. But basically, the quick answer to that is that Ubisoft genuinely did not trust a female-led Assassin's Creed game to the point that they decided to add the option to become a male as they thought the market wouldn't like it. I think that's very interesting. I think it's something that you need to take into account as well. Like, I think as much as, you know, people want to just take everything away, like when it comes to this game, I think at least what you can say is that they gave you a strong character all around, or a strong male character. They didn't intrude upon anything. They actually made an Assassin's Creed game. That is what this game is. It's an Assassin's Creed game coated with RPG-esque mechanics. It's got RPG elements, but really, is it that much of an RPG? Cool, you can customize what weapons you use. You've been able to do that since the beginning. Just because it has stat points doesn't change that much. I think it's a really poor argument to use against this game, as it's not really giving it a valid justice or a valid take. One thing that this game did was it defied what people thought to be possible. That you could successfully genre jump within a heavily established franchise with a rabid fan base. Origins gets a lot of hate for the reasons that I mentioned within this video. Hopefully this video was able to give you some form of clarity on many of the reasons for why they did what they did, and also some of the counterpoints to just why I think that some of the points aren't as valid. But yeah, I don't think this game is that awful. I don't think the game is like the best Assassin's Creed game, but it's definitely up there. You should definitely replay it if you haven't, and I'd highly recommend doing so as it is actually really good fun, and it's probably, like I said, the best you're going to get with a new RPG Assassin's Creed. As we know moving forward, there is going to be more of them anyway. The only one that's going to be close to what we used to get is Mirage. That'll be interesting to see. I'll have a video essay about that game out in December, so if you are interested in that, once the game does launch, and once I've played it, and so on, it'll be out in December. But like I said earlier, if you are interested in getting these a week early, make sure to go check out my Patreon. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. I did try for quite a while to find a way of making this video in a way that I actually wanted to, and I understand that I think I go off onto different areas of different conversations quite often. I understand that. It's just kind of how my brain works. And uh, yeah, once I'm back from holiday, so after this video goes out, or at least during this video's release, I shall be on holiday. So I will be basically thinking about a few things and kind of where I want to go with the point of this channel and kind of where I want to go with the structure. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you like, do subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one, which should hopefully be out in probably about another three to four weeks time. Have a good one.